And in business, the global pandemic has left economies with no other option but to review their projected growth for the 2020 fiscal year. What they have noted is the level of vulnerability of individual countries. Nigeria did not come into the pandemic on a strong economic footing and has sought financial assistance from multilateral organizations and debt relief in some cases. I am now joined by Andrew Nevin, partner and chief economist at PricewaterhouseCoopers. Good afternoon, Andrew. Good afternoon, Irene. Lovely thank to be here. Oh, thank you for joining us on the news. Uh, what is your take on the rapid loan request from the IMF? Well, I, I, I think Nigeria was in a, in a position of effectively no, no choice. I mean, this um, impact on the global economy has been so swift. We've seen hundreds of millions of people around the world lose their job in a matter of weeks. Um, so there was really no time to prepare for this. And we know in the Nigerian context that uh, we, haven't, we don't have a lot of preparation in terms of reserves or in terms of uh, sovereign wealth fund. So I think it's a, a critical thing to help uh, you know, bridge the gap as we sort the way out of the COVID-19 economic crisis. Would we see this helping in terms of um, you know, bridging the financial deficits that we currently have in the country? Well, I, I think it's a small amount that, that will help over the next few months. I mean, I think we are, the way we've expressed this is the immediate need of uh, the country is to focus on two things. One is to get resources into the hands of the pyramid, and two is to keep the food supply chain moving. And the reason for this, I mean, we all understand there are tens of millions of Nigerians who work for a daily wage, and with the lockdowns, the sudden ceasing of economic activity, uh, people need to eat. So that's the immediate need. In the medium term, I think the, the government faces tremendous fiscal challenges. Uh, it needs to really rethink the, the way forward for the country, serious, become serious about diversification. But this uh, money from the, from the IMF and other sources of funding that the country is seeking, World Bank, AFDB, are just to buy some time to be able to sort through these incredible issues. I mean, we've never seen an economic... Um, economic crisis like this. We, the United States, they've had 30 million people put into unemployment in five weeks. A contraction in Europe, uh, we're just starting to see numbers how, how fast the contraction is in the economies in Italy and Germany. The UK will come out, I think, next week. Uh, it's unprecedented, and we need an unprecedented response. And you did mention Germany. Now, uh, we see countries like Germany giving Nigeria debt relief. How can Nigeria leverage on this seeming crisis to its advantage? Well, I think that, I mean, the Germans for, forgave, if I remember correctly, about 22 million euros. So it's not a huge amount, but I think it's important symbolically. I think Germany is trying to do the right thing. I think that around the world, um, governments and people like the IMF are starting to realize that the developing world has a debt crisis. I think there's at least a trillion dollars of, of debt to, the, to um, multilaterals out there. And with this economic impact of COVID-19, it's not clear this could ever be paid back. So I think that while the German gesture is good and shows the right step forward, there's going to have to be a lot more thought about real debt restructuring, larger amounts, not for just for Nigeria, but for many emerging countries. I mean, if we take a look for a moment at South Africa, it was just announced their debt today, uh, and one of the other rating agencies sunk further into junk status. So. We've got Nigeria, South Africa already having economic difficulties and then faced with the COVID-19 crisis. I mean, there are debts out there for African countries that will never get repaid. So do you see, post-COVID, do you see some form of um, a better response in terms of financial stewardship within the Nigerian government? Well, I think that what's happening with COVID-19 in Nigeria from a fiscal standpoint is I think the government may be forced to make decisions they wouldn't otherwise make. So in a sense, we may have a forced restructuring of the economy. So we've already seen the fuel price subsidy uh, eliminated, which has been debated for a long time in the country. Suddenly, within a few weeks, it's gone. And we've already seen uh, a devaluation and a narrowing between the parallel rate and the official rate, something, again, we've been discussing a long time, and now suddenly action's taken. Uh, if you think about what's happened in the oil market, um, oh, the price of oil, uh, Brent, is about $20 today, I believe, which means that the production cost of 
is twenty dollars or a little bit higher, a little bit lower, but effectively there's going to be no revenue coming from oil to the federal government. So then I think there's going to be some hard decisions, fiscal restructuring decisions that need to be made. And then, as I said earlier, the, the advantage of taking the IMF money to be blunt about it is it gives at least a few months to be able to, to make the right decisions. But the restructuring of the Nigerian economy is about to be forced upon upon the country. Thank you so much for joining us on the news, Andrew. You're very welcome. Certainly. We've been speaking with the partner and chief economist at PricewaterhouseCoopers.